two families entwined as one. I love Grouchon over the years. It makes a place right all along. The time we spend apart will make our love grow strong. Testing, one, two, three, there we go. That was a wonderful song, thank you very much. Family and friends, if you could just kind of gather a little bit closer. One thing about weddings, join together as family and friends. Um, this is a very intimate uh, commitment that they're sharing and it's just good to have family and friends right here. You can hold both of each other's hand. I have a very important question for you. Are you two now willing to take this new step in your relationship as husband and wife? Well, this has been quite a journey for both of you. And the journey was to find your soulmate. The very moment we're born, we have that empty point in our life. And we spend our entire life looking for that one person. That one person that completes our life. That's our soulmate. The Song of Solomon says this, I have found the one who my soul loves. I have found the one who my soul loves. Let's pray together. Our Father in Heaven, we turn to you at this moment, asking that you be glorified in what takes place here, Lord, that this ceremony would honor you and reflect the seriousness of the vows that are to be spoken. May this ceremony be a new beginning for men and Lord, to commit themselves to pursue a Christ-centered life. Dear Lord, we put their marriage and love their life's commitment in your hands, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 This is usually where I have everyone sit down, but you can stay standing. You know, right? <laughs> You're holding hands. William Shakespeare says this. When you join your hands, you also join your hearts. So today we all gather together as family and friends because we love this couple, don't we? Yes. And they love you. And you're a very special part of who they, who they're, who they are who they were and who they will be. They love you and that's why you're here. They want to thank you for being here, being present at this moment. When they look back, they're going to remember what a beautiful day this was, how great it was to see each other, but also how precious it was for all of you to be here for this moment. Does everyone have a seashell? 
Yes. Yes. Everyone do a seashell? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Let me share what we're going to be doing with that seashell. When God created the seashell, it was filled with something living. By the time it got to the seashore, it was empty. So during this ceremony, Matt and Lori would like you to hang on to that seashell. Fill it with your hopes and your dreams and your prayers. And at the end of the ceremony, we're going to walk down as close as we can to the seashore, stand shoulder to shoulder, and throw that seashell, now filled with your love and hopes and dreams, back into the ocean. And we'll be doing that. We're talking about finding your soulmate. I want you to think about this, this one particular thing. All I've done all of my life, life is make my way here to you. When you think about that, how precious that is? Even before you knew each other, God had a plan for both of you. All of your life, all you did all of your life is make your way here to each other. So I want to say now, on this beach, Lori and Matt, welcome to the rest of your life. This is where it begins. You're walking down to this point. The door is open. Cutting the door to the past. You're opening it to a brand new future. You're walking in together. It's a brand new future. May the love you have for each other be constant and unchanging. The vows you're about to make always remain on your heart. Now I want to remind you that God has brought you together as a key to your relationship. So I ask you to draw on your strength on a regular basis. You're both asked by God to see the good in each other. To accept each other for who you are and who you will be. And finally, most importantly, and this can be the most difficult, to love each other without condition, without placing any expectations upon each other. Let's talk about love for a second. <coughs> love isn't always perfect. You'd like it to be perfect. It isn't a fairy tale or a storybook. It doesn't have anything to do with being easy. Love is overcoming obstacles facing challenges, fighting to be together, holding on and never letting go. is a short word, easy to say, but impossible to do sometimes without each other. Love is work. But most of all, love is realizing that every hour, every minute, every second was worth it because you guys are all together. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says this. And the Apostle Paul would pretty much remind us that love is an action. It's not an emotion. Does that make sense? Sometimes that's easy. It's very easy to think it's just an emotion, but it's an action. And he goes on to say that love is patient and love is kind. Love is gentle, not jealous, not boastful or jealous. Love is not arrogant and love is not rude. So if you love each other, can they be rude to each other? Yeah. It's no. <laughs> love is not rude. <laughs> it's not irritable or resentful. Now sometimes... With whatever's going on, you're going to be irritable with one another. But your love will get you through. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. And finally, it says, love never fails. You're heading out on a journey, a new path, one that you don't know. There may be obstacles out there that you weren't anticipating. But the great, great thing about this journey is you won't be traveling it alone, will you? You'll be traveling it together. And that's why the Apostle Paul says, Love never fails. No matter what comes your way, the love you have for each other will never, ever fail. The Apostle Paul pretty much says also that love must be experienced every single day. That means this, man. There should not be one day that goes by that Lori has to wonder whether or not you love her. Not one day. Same thing for you, Lori. Wherever Matt is, he doesn't have to say to his friends or family, you know, I'm not sure if Lori still loves me must be seen and experienced every single day. As a matter of fact, before we get started, tell each other right now, but just tell you love each other. See, because love is not a feeling, like I said. It's something that you don't just fall into and fall out, out, out of whenever you want to. Love is a commitment. So you're, this is a commitment you're having with one another. Love is a commitment. It's a deliberate decision to be patient and kind is a deliberate decision not to be envious. Everything you do in terms of love is a deliberate decision. It's a choice by both of you 
to always love each other every single moment, every single day. I want you to remember also that love is not about how many days, months, or years you've been together, but how much you love each other every single day. I don't know what's going on with that. <laughs> how much you love each other every single day. Now it's time for the vows. Are you ready? Yes. Now, a, a vow is the most important promise that anyone can make to one another. <coughs> You're about to make it not only for your family and friends, part of each other, but most importantly in the presence of God. And the great thing about these vows, these are not vows that I'm giving to you. These are vows that you have prayed about and come directly from your heart. And so I'm going to hand your vows to you. Matt, you'll start first. Matt, now it's time for you to share your heart vows with Lori. For anybody that knows me, it's going to be half serious and it's going to be half. <laughs> <laughs> some comical part. <laughs> Plus, I typed mine out. Three rows are in there, so. <laughs> there, Matt. Who are you? Oh, trust me, I'm loud enough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but prior to August 22nd, 2015, I was a single dad. Coaching, living in the ball fields and gyms. Making spaghetti and pizza. <laughs> pizza rolls for dinner and doing everything humanly possible. Praise. Three of the greatest blessings of my life. crazy life that I had, someone who would involve themselves with the same activities I enjoy doing, someone who would accept, treat and love my children as their own, and someone who would support my friends. But I thought, who, who in the right mind would ever want to be part of that? <laughs> you know, and I thought, you know, Cameron was always a big, big, Bigfoot fan. I was like, I've got better chance of Bigfoot than <laughs> But he never did. <laughs> However, I always had faith that God was leading me down the path where I needed to be. It was in his plan to bring someone that special, that selfless, that caring, someone with that beautiful heart and soul in my life. Then I knew that I would be led down that path. On August 22nd, 2015, my path converged with Lori and Staple. And the connection was instant between us. Two of those who were right there that very day. We knew who each other was from growing up in the same small town together years ago, but we never really met until that day. Although I didn't know it then, that day was the start of an unconditional love that has grown every second, minute, hour, and day, and year that we have been together. That day would lead us to standing on this beach today to become one surrounded by our family and most cherished loved ones. Thank you all for being here. It's awesome. So, but it's clear to me that everything in life has led me to you. I think back on all the choices I've made in my life. And I even consider the not so wise choices that I made as blessed. Because if I had done one thing differently, if I never had met you, I'm your husband today. I must admit, I'm not 100% sure what it takes to be a husband. But I can promise you that I devoted you completely and I have become a better person because of your love and support with me and everything I do. 
I know I'll not always be what or who you want me to be. I'll forget to listen or forget things completely. <laughs> I might not always agree. I'll be stubborn. I'll be standing around every corner in the house to scare you when the opportunity arises. <laughs> Record it and send it to everyone that I... But I will always love you and always try to be the man. And now, husband, who you believe I can be. You know me better than anyone else in this world. And somehow you still manage to love me unconditionally. You're my best friend, my lover, my soulmate, my Bigfoot. All wrapped into one. And I'm looking forward to the many years of love and happiness we were created together as husband and wife. Man. The beginning. I feel like you did. Where's the Absolutely beautiful. Let it go. Let it go. Bigfoot, they says that two shall become one, no longer, no longer two, but one flesh. And to demonstrate that, we also have what they call the fisherman's knot, or the lover's knot, is called as well. And you started that fisherman's knot. Hang on to that for a second. In fact, let me hang on to that, because now it's time for the rings. <laughs> Don't drop them in the sand time. Circle of the wedding room, just like the fish is not, represents your love now and forever. <coughs> Place it in this outside, this outside hand, you're know, holding tight like that. Hold each other's hand here. Can you feel the ring in your hand? I wanted to make an impression. Because when you look back on this day, I want you to remember what it felt like to have that ring in your hand. It represents the strength of your relationship, just like the knot 
will reflect the strength of your relationship. Go ahead and place the ring on Lori's finger and repeat after me. Lori, I give you all that I am. And all I am to become as your husband. Take this ring. And with it, my promise of faith. My promise of patience. And my promise of love. For the rest of my life. Lori, place the ring on Matt's finger. Repeat after me. Matthew, I give you all that I am. And all I am to become as your wife. Take this ring. And with it, my promise of faith. My promise of patience. And my promise of love. For the rest of my life. And now if you two will hold the lover's knot. Before they began tying the knot, they had to separate, two separate things of rope, and it represented their past, their family, their friends, everything they know about themselves, the gifts they bring into the relationship, were the single ropes. As they begin to tie those ropes, that represents the present, the gifts they bring into the relationship, the commitments, the vows they bring into the relationship. And as they tie and pull the knot, that represents their future, their future together. The completed knot represents their future, secure in the knowledge of their relationship, strong no matter what life challenges that come their way. Although the fisherman's knot is one of the most simple knots, most simplest knot to tie, the more you pull it together, the stronger it becomes. I ask you now to go ahead and, and pull on the ropes. <laughs> the rope strengthens under pressure, just as you two together as husband and wife, no matter what pressures come your way, just like the rope. The pressure will draw you closer together and make you stronger. This rope will always represent the strength of your relationship from this day forward. And that. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 says two are, better, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. For if either of them falls, the one will lift up their companion. And if one can overpower him who is alone, two can resist him. The cord of three strands is not quickly broken. And I know you, I told you that there are two strands tied together. The third strand represents Christ, who keeps that rope taut, who keeps that rope strong along with your relationship. Let's pray together. Dear God, we ask you to bless this marriage as they begin their journey down the road of life together, God. Help them to continue to enjoy each other as they did when they first met. Help them to learn from each other, God, to help each other grow mentally, emotionally, and more importantly, spiritually. God, help them to hold on to each other and grow in their relationship with you. Dear Lord, their marriage, their love, their commitment, their family in your hands, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Before we continue, let's have a family hug, right? We get all the, the family together. Well, we're all family. You really well, want children? all of us? <laughs> the children okay, together. Let's go with the children. Let's get the children yeah. together. <laughs> because the important thing about this this family bond right here, because as they come together as a husband and wife, they are also bonding together as a family. The lovely words they shared about not only each other, the love they have for the children uh, is, is monumental. And this, is what, this is what marriage and love is all about. And this is the bonding. This is the coming together of one flesh. Ephesians chapter 4 says this. Be 
completely humble and gentle, be patient, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. All right, kids, now we're getting to the important part. All right, so inasmuch as you promise yourselves in marriage, symbolize your unity by the giving and the receiving of a ring. We hold hands. We're almost there. By the power invested in me as a minister of the gospel and the presence of God, I now pronounce you to be husband and wife. Whom God has joined together like no man. You. The love of God unfolds you. The power of God protects you. And the presence of God watch over you all the days of your life. Now, Matt, this is why I had the children step away. <laughs> you may have to kiss your bride.